Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Breguet La Tradition 7027BR. This tradition series Breguet can be seen and purchased on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high-resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Breguet La Tradition. Tradition 7027BR in rose gold. Now the watch on my wrist is the classic profile of the 2005 La Tradition model that redefined what Breguet was in the modern era. Now when Swatch Group purchased the company in 2000, it inherited the design language that Daniel Roth had pioneered during the 1980s, and it inherited traditionally strong Breguet nameplates like the Type 20 aviation chronograph and the marine aquatic dress watch, but it was the tradition of 2005 that redefined what Breguet stood for in the modern era of the luxury wristwatch rather than 20th century tool watches and 19th century commissioned pocket watches. Today, Breguet channels the spirit of the master in open movement timepieces of the tradition line that more than anything define the visceral thrill of feeling in commune with what Breguet wrought during the 18th and 19th centuries. 38 millimeters across the round of the case, not inclusive of the crown. The watch is nice and slim. 11.8 millimeters is an ultra thin, but with a domed bezel, it easily slides underneath a dress cuff. Now from lug to lug, it's 45.5 millimeters, so it's actually quite compact across the wrist. And I would say this is an excellent unisex option. If you want a watch that you can perhaps propose to your significant other as a dual purpose timepiece to be shared, you can rationalize the cost of this one by splitting the cost across two separate wrists. Again, very compact. I would say a 13 centimeter circumference wrist could wear this. 18 karat rose gold, it is quite rich. And as you can see, the strap is minimally bolstered. It's substantial without being bolstered in the fashion that can create constraint. So you pull it straight down around a small wrist. It doesn't want to flare and fight you by getting pressed up against the case flank. It is a dark black tapered rectangular scale alligator leather with folded edges and a monotone stitch and a simple stylized rose gold pin buckle for easy adjustments. Now the case features some of that design language that Roth pioneered in the 80s. A coined case flank, it's cold rolled and then hand finished to produce the result you see here. These straight lugs are actually soldered on or welded at the point of juncture with any remaining material then removed by hands such that there's no evidence of the welded joint. It even features screw fixed strap, which is far more confidence inspiring than spring bars. So though subtle, it is nevertheless quite tough. And finally, the piece de resistance, caliber 507DR. It effectively is the watch. Now, I didn't wind the watch deliberately prior to the video because there's something magical about watching the interaction of a timepiece from the crown as well as a timepiece coming to life in real time. You also got a good chance to see the aerodynamic styled free sprung balance of the watch. Now the balance of the watch is free sprung such that it is very good at taking a precise regulation via, for those who missed, variable inertia balance blocks that are built into the periphery of the balance rim. The moment of inertia can be moved in and out by adjusting those blocks. The recess of them is why I call this an aerodynamic balance. It takes them out of the free air stream as the balance oscillates at 21,600 vibrations per hour. Now what you're looking at on top is an elaborate shock protection mechanism known as parachute. It is in fact part of the master's own vision of watchmaking as Breguet first invented the shock protection system during the pocket watch era, making it one of the first solutions to the problem of concussion on the precision and longevity of a watch. Now the nice thing about this movement is not only does it effectively double as the dial of the watch, but it's a case study in how a watch delivers power from its mainspring barrel to its escapement. The mainspring barrel is entirely centralized and it is the centerpiece of the dial. From there you have fourth wheel, or rather I should say second wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, and then escape wheel. You can see the toothed escape wheel pivoting away under my finger. And then there is an anchor that impulses the balance to transfer the power that starts at the crown 
the heartbeat of your watch. Now, although you can't see, maybe you can when I stop the mechanism, there is an overcoil. It's not one of the silicon hair springs. This one is a true Breguet overcoil made by hand. It doubles over itself to promote concentric beating. Its function is to centralize the center of gravity of the hair spring such that the watch beats with excellent isochronism, neither gaining time nor losing time in different orientations relative to gravity. Now the dial may look simple, but it's quite complex. It's cut on a traditional rose lathe by a guillotier, a specialized artisan who uses a series of cams to guide the mechanism after sketching it freehand. It is a solid 18 karat gold disc and then it is blackened before the Breguet style hands are added. Now you'll note that there is a blackening of the entire movement. The train wheels themselves and the balance have been silvered as has the mainspring barrel. But if you look very closely at the edge of each individual structure within the movement, you'll see that it features a hand laid bevel and true mirrored, rounded anglage. So though the watch does appear anachronistic, nevertheless the best modern standards and traditions of finish are executed. On the case back you can see the mechanism that underpins the power reserve scale, perhaps more prominent on the reverse side than the small 50 hour power reserve indicator is on the dial side. The watch does have a 50 hour power reserve manually wound and it's a charming sight from either side, but you're going to want to look at this one. This is the kind of watch you can show to someone who doesn't know anything about luxury watches and may have no interest or inclination. This is the hook that will get them started because it so perfectly communicates the appeal of mechanical watchmaking. Everything coming full circle at the manufacturer brigade, it really does bring you back to the simple pleasure that the master himself must have known in his era. You can see this one and you can know that pleasure on our website.